Today on Treasure Hunting for Nostalgia. And I looked at him, I say, I said, I don't play Xbox. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, he said, oh, it's going to burn your hands or something. I said, yeah. And you know you're going to have to face one big ugly motherfucker at the end. <laughs> Eater of segways. <laughs> A horse. Oh man. No one else thought it looked like a penis? <laughs> You're listening to Treasure Hunting for Nostalgia. Hello and welcome to episode 74 of Treasure Hunting for Nostalgia. This is Brandon. This is Brad. This is Nick. No action this episode. <laughs> no actionless? Ac actionless. You know why? Why? Trip to Finn. Oh, from the turkey? From the... F yeah. Is it just turkey? I think so. Oh. I, we didn't have any turkey. Oh, then you don't have an excuse. No. We need to see some action then. All right, I'll, I'll I'll hopefully bring some action to it. <laughs> so in this uh, actionless episode, we have quote time starting with Nick, game of the week action, treasure hunting. I thought we said no action. Uh, top five. <laughs> <laughs> some jerk of the weeks and some stone cold blocks. Oh hell yeah! <laughs> so is it quote time? I think it is. Okay. I want to get the quote right, so I'm, I'm pulling it up right now. Okay. Given that today is the day after Thanksgiving, I wanted to do something slightly Thanksgiving-themed. So here's my quote. Let's chow down and munch on some major grindage! I don't know what that is. I don't know what it is either. Holly Shore? Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, Son-in-law? Yeah. Oh, I thought it was going to be Polly Shore is dead. <laughs> No. The last scene in that movie is when Pauly Shore's character comes back to the broad's house. The broad means girl, for those of you who don't know. <laughs> and it's a term of endearment. I don't mean it offensively. Uh, but he goes back to the girl's house, and uh, he wins her dad over. And her dad uses Pauly Shore's line for food, because Pauly Shore always says grindage whenever he's referring to food. <laughs> And, uh, yeah, it's basically uh, the dad's way of saying welcome to the family. Yeah. And it's, they, they sit down and share a Thanksgiving dinner together. That's my favorite Thanksgiving movie. Do you guys have any favorite Thanksgiving movies? Home Alone. I think that's a Christmas movie. <laughs> <laughs> There's not many of them, so I wouldn't blame you if you did not have a favorite Thanksgiving movie. No. I don't think, yeah. There's, like, Home for the Holidays. Um Son-in-law. <laughs> I'm sure there's a few others, but I can't. I don't know them right now. But son-in-law's always been a favorite of mine. Came Tiffany out. Amber Thingston. Whew. She's a little <laughs> bit of all right. <laughs> so that's my uh, quote of the week for quote time. And I uh, also wanted to recommend a YouTube video. This is one that Brad put up recently where I'm sh fucking shredding on my guitar looking hella sexy. Episode 70, Shitty Tears. The, the, is it called the Game Edition? Game Show. Game Show Edition. Yeah, I had a, I had a really good time uh, putting all that together, learning all the, the music to the different uh, WWE wrestlers and also the video game themes. It was a really fun uh, show to put on. And uh, if you go to that YouTube for episode 70, you can see me. I look hecka sexy. That was back in my uh, more suave days. <laughs> yeah, I did Facebook stalk Nick for that picture. I was like, I'm sure he's got a picture of playing the guitar. <laughs> and I found one. Game of the week. I've played Kingdom Hearts for the past week. I set up the PlayStation 2 in my bedroom. So I can just lay in bed and play it. Don't even have to get out of bed. Uh, I just beat Agrabah. Uh, I've got the third Trinity mark. 
That's not how you worded it when you came over. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I told Nick I beat the Punjabi level. <laughs> <laughs> but I was telling Nick it's weird seeing Eris in this game because, you know, she dies in part seven, so it's weird seeing her back. Especially after I listened to Eris themes like once a day from Pandora, so it was interesting. Um but it's a good throwback to play. I like playing that game. He's laying there in bed and a single tear goes down his cheek. <laughs> but that's all I had, Kingdom Hearts. Oh, um, I've been playing Bowser and Luigi, or Mario and Luigi, the Bowser's Inside Story. I found that over at your house. The kids were like, here's our DS games, and it was in there, so I took it back and I've been playing it. It's pretty fun. It's about Bowser, or Mario and Luigi get sucked up into Bowser's body, and you control Bowser and, <laughs> and Luigi and Mario separately, so you'll be controlling Bowser, then he'll have to lift something heavy, and you go into his bicep. And um, you have to like hit his bicep with these energy sparks to make him stronger, so he can lift it. It's pretty fun. <laughs> Is this a DS game? Yes. Okay. Yeah, that's why I never heard of it. That's cool. Sounds fun. Yes, yeah, RPG. Uh, I was trying to find Super Mario RPG on the Nintendo Store, but I think it's only on the Wii U. Mm -hmm. uh, I was uh, my fa my household, I guess, hosted Thanksgiving yesterday, so we were pretty busy the last couple days. Uh, but I did find about a two-hour window to fit in some video games between when we finally got everything prepared and people started showing up. So I played a little bit of The Last of Us, still working on that, of course. Uh, when I started, I was going through this uh, foresty type area in Jackson County, Montana, looking for this guy named Tommy. I finally run into him. No, is it Tommy or Donnie? I think it's Tommy. Yeah, it is Tommy. Is it Tommy? Yeah, you text me Donnie. I was like, huh, I didn't think his name was Donnie. But it's Tommy. Okay. Uh, so I, I finally ran into him. He He's like one of the leaders of this group of uh, very few left, the last of us, civilians uh, in this in this fort where they're, they're basically making it, you know, as a civilization, which is rare in a post-apocalyptic world. And then uh, you find that that's actually the main character's Joel's brother, which they, they don't directly tell you prior to that point. Um, and then there are another, there's another group of characters who come in and like try to raid the place. And after that, uh, Joel t tells Tommy <laughs> that he has, you know, the, the one person, the one human who is actually immune to uh, the virus. And, uh, they're trying to get her to the Firefly so that they can re, re, uh, research, uh, you know, what's making her immune and if they can, you know, produce that for everyone else in the world. And that's kind of where I'm at right now. Ellie is the name of the girl. She got scared because Donnie or Tommy, god damn, I keep mixing the name up, got, got scared about the whole situation because, you know, he, as far as he's concerned, she's infected. Maybe she can get everyone else infected. So uh, she overhears her his concerns and she takes off on a horse actually, which is kind of cool. I, I wasn't expecting to see any horses in this game, but then uh, Joel and his brother Tommy go off on a horse, and that's kind of where I'm at right now. I've been uh, searching for Ellie on a horse. Kind of reminds me of playing Zelda, riding a pony around, and uh, that's kind of where I'm at right now. Mm -hmm. It's uh, according to the game, I'm 65 percent of the way through. <laughs> <laughs> Treasure hunting. Mm -hmm. How many times do you have? One. And you're minus five. Yes. Do you want to present your item first? Do you have any treasure? Yes. Oh, you have? Two. Uh-oh. <laughs> Sega game. Streets of Rage. It's only worth 1075 last time I checked. Well, we could see if it went up. Or down. 1075. Here's my first item. Okay, NBA Jam. Also for the Genesis. Complete? Yes. With book? Yes. Confirmed. Nice. <laughs> Is it booklet color or black and white? The color. Inside? 
Oh. Why does that matter? Because Genesis is usually uh, cheap when it comes to instruction booklets, and they always do black and white. I was seeing if this was the case on this, too. But you're saying there's a difference? Like, some of them are... No, no. He just wanted to know, I guess. It looks like it's black and white. Yeah, stupid Sega. Always mm -hmm. being Jewish with their instruction <laughs> booklets. <laughs> I think Nick will appreciate this game next. I appreciate NBA Jam. What's NBA Jam worth? Seven dollars complete. Ha oh, ha! Heck of tight. Mario Lemieux hockey. <laughs> it is not complete. Oh. Can you tell me how much the complete is worth? Oh fuck. <laughs> One hundred and twelve dollars and fifty cents. What? So that's not the same one. Yeah, it is. There's red lettering on the one you have pictured. This one doesn't have red lettering. It doesn't matter. That's just a sticker. It's <laughs> the same thing. There's no special edition or anything like that. There's only one Mario Lemieux hockey for Sega Genesis. <laughs> this has a a tag on it for 99 cents. <laughs> and last time I looked, it was 10 cells per year, and now it's 12 cells per year. Even the Amazon complete price is $134. So we could probably get like 80 bucks out of this thing. Uh, how much is it uh, by itself? $3.99. <laughs> I don't think we're going to get like 80 bucks from it. We might. There's nothing on there that uh, gives you a price in box without the instructions? No. Because that's what this is. It's in the box, but it doesn't have the instructions. And is therefore considered to be incomplete, correct? Uh, yeah. Even if it's worth 10 like a lot of these are playing for, the loose ones are paying for $10 on the auctions. I see one for $5. Uh, I see a lot for There's more. Uh, that's why it's complete. It came with a puck. Oh, okay. That makes sense then. The puck is going for five bucks, ten bucks. The game, three ninety five. Here's one complete, five bucks. That's sucks. Here's one, yeah, here's one, a dollar for four ninety nine. So, it looks like with my minus five, I barely lost. Seven... You say the most is five? Yeah. I see one case and book with the game, 12 bucks. But most of them are a dollar to six dollars. So then let's get this punishment out of the way. Eight. <laughs> Sharukin. <laughs> Three. Hadoken. <laughs> 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 I'm gonna go Hadoken. Oh, <laughs> your your prize six. Still random treasure. Roll again twice. Okay. Nine. Death punch. Three. Hadoken. Still random treasure. All right. So what is this Hadoken? Did I choose? Fitting since I was watching a Street Fighter movie last night. Do you want me to record it on your phone? Because you have direct access to YouTube. You know? <laughs> Here, use this. I'm not gonna use that. No, to bend over and not the chair. Because right, you want to brace yourself, right? This will be our first documented Hadoken. I can't do it like that. You have to get like put, <laughs> get up on your feet. Take it or leave it. Hadoken! Oh! <laughs> oh! <laughs> oh! How'd you get the nuts? <laughs> oh! I wasn't aiming. <laughs> Should have went up, got up higher. I would have got your butt probably. <laughs> <laughs> Why did my <laughs> You already had all, have all the children you're gonna have. <laughs> oh. 
Why does that always make my freaking heart race? I got sweating too. <laughs> oh. There was a lot of ass crack in that video. <laughs> I don't know if you're going to want to post that one. It's not ass crack. It's where my toe was. <laughs> That's right. It'd be heck of funny if he, he could blur it out. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So go ahead and like us on Facebook. We're getting a lot more likes than uh, we used to now. Uh, we also have a few females liking us. So thank you for that. Uh, Instagram, go ahead and follow us and subscribe to us on YouTube as well. Uh, like I said, we got a, another random prize coming up, so uh, hopefully around 76 we'll have a drawing for you guys. So Brandon's going to start us out this time. Top five games that feature aliens as the protagonist or antagonist. Nothing like where, like Final Fantasy VIII where one alien pops up. Remember that? You have to go searching for the UFO. Yes. I'm glad I didn't use that one. I have some actually uh, pretty modern games on my list. Starting with number five, I have Resistance, Fall of Man. Yeah. What? What? Why don't you like that game? Oh, I just don't like it. No. Even though it is a first-person shooter, it does feature aliens, which I like killing. Uh, the series takes place in an alternate history around the year 1950 in which an alien civilization known as the Chimera have invaded and conquered Earth. Expanding their armies by capturing humans and transforming them into monster-like super soldiers to fight them. The Chimera are a species of unconfirmed origin that arrived on Earth with the asteroid from the Tunisca event, who served as the main enemies in the game. The first, they first appeared in Siberia uh, in the game's alternate history. The human forces initially believed the Chimera to be the result of a Russian biological warfare experiment gone wrong. But that wasn't the case. This game features the main character, Nathan Hale, a human that's been partially infected by the Chimera virus that gives him regenerative abilities, but has not completely taken over his body like it does everyone else. So going throughout this game, you have to fight the, the infection. He's dealing with that, trying to stay healthy and not turn into one of the enemy. It takes place in like the 50s, like I said, so there's that 50s vibe going on throughout the game. Uh, huge monsters everywhere to take down, a bunch of weapons. I really didn't like Part 2. Part 1 really set it for me. And it was one of the first games I got for my PS3. I think that's why I didn't, don't like it, because the third part was such a letdown. I feel like it just didn't complete the story. Resistance 3? You played it? No. Oh. I just heard bad things about oh. it. Yeah, I haven't played it. Part 2, the ending sucked really bad. Yeah. I hated the ending, but... Um, yeah, part, I just, one's the best. part one's fun, but I just don't feel it as top five material. Mm -hmm. um, number five on my list is Doom for the Super Nintendo. First game I remember playing that made me pause the game and leave my room in fright. We were fighting the barons of hell, and all of a sudden the, those little demons of hell came out, and we just got scared and ran. So that was my number five is Doom. Such a cool game. I never got to play it right on the computer because the computer that we had... My mom didn't get a sound card for it, so it just sounded like bloops and bleeps, and you couldn't hear the music. So when Super Doom came out, I snatched that up. So we're doing top five video games featuring aliens, right? The definition of extraterrestrial is of or from outside the Earth or its atmosphere. That means that Fusoya is an alien. He's a Lunarian from the Red Moon, and it is his job to watch over the Lunarian's sleep. Like other Lunarians, he waits until the day when humans evolve to the point that their two races, the humans and the Lunarians, can coexist in peace. So, I'm going to make number five Final Fantasy IV. I've already said enough about Final Fantasy IV. It's probably, if not the, one of my favorite uh, video games ever. But I, I do feel it's kind of a cop-out to, <laughs> to put it on this list. So I'm going to put it as number five rather than number one. You could also use uh, Zemus as the uh, coincidence to put... But uh, the thing is, Zemus, even though he was the primary antagonist in the end, he was barely in the game. <laughs> and you don't even know he, he existed until right. the end. I felt like Fusoya played more of a vital role. 
that was my number three. I put uh, Sea Soul as half your Lunarian through the game, so. Uh, number four on my list is Duke Nukem 64, the port of the PC game called Duke Nukem. Uh, there are multiple changes in this game. Basically, you start out, you, you're, you're the main character, Duke Nukem, who's a line stealer. He steals all his cool catchphrases from Ash from Evil Dead. <laughs> He's a line stealer. He is. And Carlos Mencia. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, uh, you're this ultra hip bad guy or badass guy who goes around and fights aliens. And you know what these aliens take the form of? pigs in cop uniforms <laughs> so you could go around in the pc game i guess you could run into strippers and hookers and be like "Ooh, baby or something like that <laughs> but in the you could kill them too but nice. in the super nintendo ver or nintendo 64 version they're just called babes and they're in little green pods that you have to rescue and they say help me and then huh. you save them Nintendo. Yeah. Oh, Dumbing Nintendo. it down. Yeah. Uh, this game made my number four because the last boss is freaking amazing. He's You fight on the football field, and it's this huge alien. He's about 20 stories high at least. Oh, fuck. And you have to go around and find rocket launcher fuel ammo and shoot it with, kill him with that, and it, it was fun. You could go and hide in the uh, little uh, dugouts. <laughs> Not dugouts. <laughs> um, <laughs> I forgot that you made it. I said it was a football field. Uh, wherever the people come out of, like the team, they come out like, yeah, like the arm gorilla position. Yeah, yeah. And like in the locker rooms and stuff. And so that's my number four, Duke Nukem. Multiplayer four. was pretty fun on that. Yeah, it was. You could, and you didn't punch, you kicked with your boot. <laughs> yeah. Number four on my list is going to have to be Dragon Ball Z's Boo's Fury. It's the best Dragon Ball RPG created for the Game Boy Advance or any other system. That's all I have to say about that. Well, does that take you through Saiyan through Boo Saga? No. I think it's World Games through Boo Saga. Ah, oh, that sucks. Yeah. It's cool, though, because you get to level up all your characters and stuff, and the storyline's pretty accurate. What's the uh, fighting like? You, you just run around on a screen and fight people? Okay. Secret of Mana style. Okay. My number four is a PC game. I'm gonna go with StarCraft. Uh, the Zerg Swarm is a terrifying and ruthless amalgamation of biologically advanced arthropodal aliens. Dedicated to the pursuit of genetic perfection, the Zerg relentlessly hunt down and assimilate advanced species across the galaxy, incorporating useful genetic code into their own. Uh, whenever I played StarCraft, I w I've never played like the story mode. I always played multiplayer. Uh, honestly, I always sucked at it. I, that could be because I was playing against superior competition. I was always playing against the Gerwer brothers, and they play this game all the time. Hotkeys, gotta know the hotkeys. Yeah, apparently, that's what the 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 sea bear was learning. <laughs> I'll, I'll go down and say I will never use hotkeys ever because I'll never play a PC game that requires them. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I gotta say you're missing out. The, there are some good PC games, and StarCraft is one of them. I just like, like you said, you do have to learn the hotkeys, and it does take a lot of practice to learn that. So if you're going to get good at it, you do have to spend a lot of time at it, and I just don't have the time. But when I do play, it is a lot of fun. Uh, I like building all the structures and making your colony huge, and I like that you get to use your own strategy as to what, what abilities you want to boost up. But like I said, it's just when you're playing against superior competition, you generally don't last that long. <laughs> But it is a fun game, and whenever I did play, I always like to use the Zergs. Uh, the Zerg is, like I said, the alien uh, tribe or race. Uh, there's also the Protoss, which is the robotic race. And then there's the Terran, which is basically just humans. I like the Zerg. Zerg the Zergs cool. are, the, are by far the coolest. I have, uh, oh, go ahead. No, no, no. I was just going to say that's, that's my number four, Starcraft. I have a pretty funny story to tell. You know when we went over... It, uh, Wednesday night to play video game or Munchkin and stuff at Brian's house. Matt, Matty G said he'd be over after the Kings game. Right. And so I get, the, like, I'm looking at my phone and I'm checking out, like, it's three minutes left in the quarter. <laughs> like, 
All right, so after about 15 minutes, I go over to Brian's. I arrive. Maddie G's nowhere to be found for another, like, until after you came, like, yeah, night was, something. It was post nine, yeah. So. And I told Brian I wouldn't be there till Yeah, night. yeah, yeah. So, uh, so I sat down, I was talking to Brian, and he throws on a video game. Uh, it's Grand Theft Auto V for the Gay Box One. So. <laughs> Two minutes after he started playing that, you came and, you know, knocked on the door. And then he got up and said, you're not a player, right? And handed me the Xbox controller. <laughs> <laughs> and I looked at him. I say, I said, I don't play Xbox. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, he said, oh, it's going to burn your hands or something. I said, yeah. <laughs> so then Hank was like, you're really missing out on uh, some cool games. I only play games I, uh, I enjoy. I said, yeah, me too. <laughs> it's your turn. Three. Oh, my number three, uh, Predator for NES, oh, just because of the Predators. <laughs> He's got all these types of utensils and cutlery to kill anything, even alien xenomorphs from the movie Aliens. <laughs> and that was my number three. You, you really can't, uh, you can't uh, debate a Predator. <laughs> I don't think a predator would want to debate you. He probably just wants to kill you. Exactly. <laughs> and take your skull as a trophy. <laughs> My number three was Final Fantasy II. For Super Nintendo, not four. I don't oh, know. I always say Final Fantasy IV. I don't know why. It's just a habit. Yeah. Uh, I also have an NES game for my number three. It's The Simpsons, Bart vs. The Space Mutants. The very first Simpsons video game released in 1991. Uh, the game is a 2D side-scrolling platformer where uh, Bart uses X- X-ray glasses to weed out aliens. They live style. Yep. <laughs> the aliens plot to destroy the world and Bart's tasked with the responsibility of destroying the aliens. But to do so, he must convince others in the Simpsons universe that the aliens walk amongst them. The game contained a lot of co- cool references from the show. Uh, the game controls a little bit cumbersome, kind of a mark against it, but I have really good memories playing this game uh, throughout my youth, so I'm going to go with The Simpsons, Bart vs. The Space Mutants is my number three. No matter no matter how bad the controls were on that game, it was so super fun to control Bart. Yeah. yeah. With the bottle rockets and the cherry bomb. They gave him a lot of cool accessories. Yeah. Yeah. With level one, you had to spray paint all the purple items red. Yeah, yep. yep. that was tight. And then level two happened with the cement, the mall. I hated that level. <laughs> the lollipops you had to jump on. <laughs> Number two on my list, uh, Dead Space 2. Uh, space exploration gone wrong. The game begins in the asylum on the Sprawl, a densely populated space station surrounding a shard of Titan, one of Saturn's moons. Isaac Clarke, who was a protagonist in part one, awakens with no memory of the past three years since age of seven, having just been awoken by Francis DeLille, who apparently is a protagonist of Dead Space Ignition, which I've never played. I think it's like a PSP game or something. And he's trying to free Isaac. Uh, What's happening during this is a necromorph outbreak uh, starts and it claims Franco's life in which you see him transform into a necromorph right in front of you. And that just draws you in to want to play the game and get the platinum trophy on it. Necromorphs are awesome. Number two on my list is going to have to be Earthbound for the Super Nintendo. The uh, game opens up with UFOs attacking a suburb, so you know it's going to be cool from the get-go. And you know you're going to have to face one big ugly motherfucker at the end <laughs> named Gygus. <laughs> Uh, throughout the game you fight cute little UFOs and they have little bows in their hair. You fight aliens. Uh, but the main antagonist is Gygus. You actually have to go back in time to kill him. And in order to go back in time, you have to put your brain inside of a robot body. So that's pretty crazy. Uh, but that game's so much fun. I played through it recently and it never gets old. It's a great game. It, uh, it almost went on my list as well. But... I wanted Final Fantasy VII on my list. Four? Four, four? four? You wanted Final Fantasy IV on your list? I said Final Fantasy VII. Is that your number one? That's my number two. 
Oh, okay. It's my turn, right? Oh, yeah. I'm on yeah. number two. <laughs> I, was, I was trying to do a segue. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> I, I thought you misspoke with four and seven. Thanks Brandon. For, thanks eat, for fucking it up. <laughs> eater of segues. <laughs> <laughs> Marlene Wallace, the adopted daughter of Barrett, referred to Gen- Genova as a calamity that fell from the sky a long, long time ago and tried to destroy the planet. Although Genova does not physically do anything in Final Fantasy VII, its existence looms over the entire game. The cells from Genova were used to create Sephiroth, and Sephiroth believes himself to be the reincarnation of Genova. So, it's going to be my number two. Genova is a uh, alien, and therefore Final Fantasy VII is a game with an extraterrestrial. Hmm. Number one was Earthbound for me. I've actually got a huge backstory for Gygus, if you guys want to hear it. Sure. So, it, have, you guys probably haven't played Mother, have you? No. I have it. I've been meaning to play it. Uh, do you care if I go through this? Because it's got major spoilers. Yeah. That's wanna, fine. Okay. Uh, it starts off with, uh, I guess the main character in er, Mother is called Ninten. Yeah. So it says, Ninten, I'm grateful to your family. Your great-grandparents, George and Maria, raised me, but George stole vital information from our planet that can be used to betray my people, and now one of his descendants is obstructing our plans and must be stopped. Ninten, I am talking about you. Go home now. Perish with the rest of the ugly earth people. Foolish one, you can you cannot do a thing with your meager powers, powers worthy of a lowly insect. You are alone. I may save you, but you are just alone. Board our mothership with me, then fall into the long sleep with your friends and the other ugly earth people. So he's a main antagonist, Gygus is, of in Mother and Earthbound. Um, he's known as, in both games as the embodiment of evil and the universal cosmic destroyer. Gygus is an evil alien who intends to sentence all of reality to the horror of infinite darkness. So he was actually an alien raised from infancy by a woman named Maria and her husband George, both of whom were abducted from Earth in 1909. During this time, George studied the aliens' psi powers without their permission, culminating with their escape back to Earth. Once he matured, Gygus was tasked by his people to ensure that psi powers never spread onto Earth. However, Gygus did not want to betray those who raised him, especially Maria. In the end, he was forced to detach himself from Maria and begin preparations for the invasion of Earth. Sometime before the invasion, Gygus comes across the Apple of the Enlightenment, a fruit that shows a future. Gygus learns of his inedible defeat at the hands of Ness, and so he attacks Earth 20 years before this would occur in order to disprove the prophecy. That's heck of tight. Yeah. When you go back in time, uh, you have to fight... Well, there's the five phases of the battle. He's in the devil machine, where he's invincible yeah. and, and heavily ironed pokey. Uh, then you fight Gygus when he's a baby, the wounded version of Gygus, then a, um, a even more wounded version of Gygus in the third phase, and then finally the fatally wounded version of Gygus, where he's a fetus. So that's my number one. It's cool. I'm going to play Earthbound now, or Mother. You should do a video recording of it. Because not too many people have played Mother. I might do that. What is the only thing in any Metroid game that makes Samus run for her life? How about an alien parasite mimicking her, stealing her powers, and hunting her down? Uh, Metroid Fusion is one of my favorite Metroid games. It only came out on the Game Boy Advance. Basically, the ex-parasite attacks Samus and mimics her. To steals all of her powers, and in order for them to take the ex-parasite off of her, because once the ex-parasite usually gets on you, you die. So they uh, give her blood transfusion. Do you remember what they transfuse her with? Uh, Metroid blood. Metroid blood. Yeah. Uh, so she gets saved by the Metroids because the Metroids are the primary hunters of the ex-parasite, and... Because of the transfusion, Samus is also vulnerable to ice in this game. So if you touch ice, it like kills you. Throughout different points in the game, the X parasite, which is called the SAX for the Samus or NX, hunts you down. You you're lost of all your powers, and that's a fully powerful Samus. So it hunts you down, and 
If it gets you, you're dead in one hit. It kills you hecka fast. So you'll have to sneak past it if it comes in a room that you're in, and you're all in an abandoned space station, so it finds you quite a few times. And the only way you're able to stop it is at the end of the game when you're fully charged. And at the end of the game, in order to beat the final boss, the X actually fuses with you, and you become a Super Samus. <laughs> So that was my number one, is Metroid Fusion. It has a great storyline and great enemies, and it's also a unique unique way to power up because, you know, on every Metroid game, you're like, how does Samus always lose her powers? So in this one, they actually explain that she got stripped of her powers from the X-Parasite. My number one is Contra. The aliens are the primary antagonists in the Contra series. In the original Contra, aliens do not appear until level 8. Uh, the alien's goal is to capture Galuga Island and form a terrorist facility to train Earth's terrorists to work for Red Falcon. What is Red Falcon? A giant heart. That's one part of it. Do you know the other part of the Red Falcon? A giant mouth. <laughs> a giant mouth that looks like... A horse. Oh, man. No one else thought it looked like a penis? <laughs> <laughs> no, I didn't. I guess I'm just a pervert. <laughs> I have a new nickname for my dick now. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, Bill and Lance, that's the uh, the your, your characters in that game that run through all, all those uh, levels, killing he hella people, and finally killing hella aliens at the end. Uh, with the goal in mind of destroying the Red Falcon, which to me looks like a penis, but apparently not to anyone else. <laughs> so that's my number one is Contra. I could see that now. Looks <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> <laughs> like the thing from Splatterhouse 3. Anybody have any honorable mentions? I have a dishonorable mention. Halo? <laughs> I don't even want to speak of that game. <laughs> <laughs> What's your dishonorable mention? Toe Jam and Earl. Why? Because it's a Genesis game. Yeah, but it's supposed to be like a fun. Um, doesn't matter. When I was little, I was like, Toe Jam and Earl sucks because it's not on Super Nintendo. <laughs> uh, I have Contra 3, the Indian Wars for Super Nintendo. As an honorable? Honorable. Yeah, that's a fun game. Um, oh, I got to give a shout out to the Silent Hills. It didn't make my list because it's not a main part of the game, but once you beat the game once... You could play through it again in, in every Silent Hill game, or well, pretty much almost all of them. There's a UFO ending where everything basically happens because of a UFO invasion. It's like a comedy twist on it, and it's kind of fun to find them. So Silent Hill was on there. Uh, Zombies Ain't My Neighbors, that has some UFOs in yeah. it, but not enough to make my list. Uh, dishonorable mention was that game that started with the letter H. <laughs> you can say Galo instead. <laughs> Our uh, fan from last episode gave us permission to. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Dexter? Yeah. What's up, Dexter? <laughs> jerk of the Week. Who has the Jerk of the Week? Ooh, I think I've, I haven't run into any. Neither have I. I've been Jerk of the Week list for quite some time now. Wow. Yeah, I can't think of a good Jerk of the Week either. Other than that referee who was not making sure the ball is live on Nick's soccer <laughs> game. But that's about it. <laughs> it wasn't the same referee, was it? Yeah, it was. Yeah. I knew that. I just wanted you to confirm. <laughs> Did you get a good picture? Well, it's just of... It's not of me behind the net. It's just like a first-person shot of being behind the net. I was hoping to get a better picture when... Hopefully I'll get a go Sunday... If I go, I want to stand behind the net and someone to take a picture of me behind it. <laughs> yeah, let me know if you go. I'll go with you and I'll take the picture. <laughs> It'll be um, after Jordan's birthday. Oh, oh that's man. right. I forgot that's about trouble. that. Oh, hell yeah! These are your stone cold locks for week 14. I think it's week 14. I really don't know. It might be week 13. <laughs> Actually, I only have one stone cold lock this week. It's the New York Giants minus one over the Jacksonville Jaguars. Wow. How do you, how do you say it? Jaguars. Jaguars. <laughs> I know Brandon hates all things New York, but this week his beloved Jaguars will fall to Grant Napier's New York football Giants. He likes the Giants? Yeah, he does. Yeah, I think he's from there. Then why, fact, is, why is he in Sacramento? Because he gets paid to do a job here. That sounds kind of shady to me. That's like selling out. He sold out New York for Sacramento. 
wishy-washy. Yeah, um, I'm pretty sure that if someone in New York offered him a job that paid him the same, he'd probably go there. From what I understand, he actually goes... Oh, by the way, if you're not from Sacramento, <laughs> Grant Napier is a uh, sports broadcaster. Uh, primarily does the Sacramento Kings uh, basketball games. But I think he goes to all the... Uh, the He's a season ticket holder for the New York Giants, I believe. So I believe he goes to all the, the home games. But anyway... Um, That, I was going to say that the, there's a minus one point spread, which basically means that if the Giants win by one point, it would be a, considered to be a push. So if you were to bet the Giants minus one and uh, it ended up being, they ended up winning by one point, you just get your money back. So basically it's just a pick em. There's not really a, any spread in this particular case, so you're just betting the Giants to win. Uh, the Jaguars, Jaguars. <laughs> are debatably the worst team in the league. Unfortunately, the Giants aren't really much better. But the Giants actually have some offensive weapons, and I believe that will win you the money if you bet the Giants this week. Besides, even though Brandon hates New York, there are some redeeming qualities about New York, most notably Nintendo World. Yeah. <laughs> there are also some decent bands from New York. Dream Theater, Living Color, and Brandon's personal favorite, Anthrax, just to name a few. I'm not an Anthrax fan. <laughs> Can you guess what band started in Jacksonville? Name me one band that started in Jacksonville. Uh, not 7 Nets, they were Atlanta. Um, I can't. You can't do it? No. Because Jacksonville fucking sucks. <laughs> it's Florida. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> There actually is one major band that started... Well, there's a couple, but the one that I'm referring to... Nickelback. Nope. Oh. I think they're Canadian, aren't they? Oh, that's <laughs> why they suck. <laughs> Leonard Skinner. Oh. And they're clearly a bunch of racists. Yeah, clearly. Made, made evident by their com constant use of the Confederate flag. Furthermore, I challenge you both. What part of Florida is Jacksonville located? On the penis. On the, the tip? No. Northeast, right next to Georgia. That's the idiot part of the state. The Jaguars don't ja stand. Jaguars <laughs> don't stand a chance. So treasure hunting for nostalgia, friends. Enjoy your new fortunes, even though there's a zero percent chance of your being able to bet on my Stone Cold Lock. <laughs> now it's time for Brandon's eight bit corner. <laughs> So, we're going to play this. Did you hear that ding? That's like an awesome Mario <laughs> Uh This or that. <laughs> so, sticking with our theme of the top five, I'm going to name a character in a video game, maybe a movie, maybe a comic book, that's either an alien or a non-alien. And now the thing is, you're going to have to take into consideration where the main plot takes place. So, an example, if I say Piccolo in the Frieza saga for Dragon Ball Z, alien or non-alien? Non-alien, of course. Because he's on his home planet, Namek. So, there's, there's a few tricky ones out there, but you guys should be able to get most of them. So, we just have to guess whether they're an alien or a non-alien? Yes. And it's dependent on where they are located? Yeah, like the main um, story of the video game. Okay. Like where the majority takes place. Number one. Necro, Street Fighter, Third Strike. Alien or non-alien? I'm going to guess non-alien. That was my guess as well. He's a scientific experiment. Non-alien. Golbez. Final Fantasy IV. Alien. Ooh, I'm going to say non-alien. Theodore was born to, born to Kluya and Cecilia, making him half Lunarian. Okay. While growing up, he always wondered why his father was fascinated by the moon and was unaware of his father's origin and descent as a Lunarian. Non-alien. How is he a non-alien? Because he's born on Earth. Even though his dad... Okay, cool. If he was born on the moon, he would have been an alien. So where you're born? That determines your... Um, like, if I go to the moon, I'm an alien of the moon. But if you have children on the moon, then those children are not... The Lunarians. 
<laughs> okay. And then if they come to Earth, they're illegal. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I guess it is like if you like, just like in uh, human services, if you have two illegals <laughs> have a kid in California, they could get full scope coverage, but the parents still can't. I okay, I, I get it. Ridley from Metroid. Ooh, I'm gonna say non-alien. Even though I don't know where he was born, but I'm just going to guess non-alien. I'm going to trust Brad because he knows more about Metroid than I do. Ridley was born on the planet Zeebies. So, non-alien. Non-alien. Lavos from Chrono Trigger. Alien. Again, I trust <laughs> Brad. That's my next game to be played after Last of Us. He is an alien. Goku from Dragon Ball Z. <laughs> I'm going to have to trust Brad on this one as well. <laughs> Uh, alien. He is an alien. Venom from Spider-Man. Oh, that is a tricky one. Because Eddie Brock was born on Earth, but Venom, I'm going to have to say he's both. I'll say non-alien. I'll say, I'll give it to Brad. Havsies. <laughs> half alien, half non-alien. The Noid from Domino's. <laughs> <laughs> That fucker's an alien. <laughs> I guess he has to be. He's a non-alien. He's just a guy in a rabbit suit. <laughs> Deadpool from the Marvel Universe. Non-alien. I'm going to say non-alien, too. He is non-alien. The Green Lantern from the DC Universe. I'm going to say non-alien because his ring is what gives him his power. He is non-alien. Sinestro from the DC Universe, holder of the Yellow Ring. I'll let Nick guess this one because I have no idea who Sinestro is. <laughs> alien. He is an alien. Good job, Nick. Then number 12, the last one, lion from the Thundercats. <laughs> <laughs> He's alien. He is an alien. It was hard coming up with friggin' aliens in this game. That's why I had to put that twist on it. That's cool. That was fun. That's all I had. Ready to do the game show? Yep. So that'll do it for episode 74, Siete y Cuatro, <laughs> of Treasure Hunting for Anastasia. This is Brandon. This is Brad. This is Nick. Feliz hunting. <laughs>